Hello, friends. This is Pastor J.D. Lee from Harvest Baptist Church of Allen, Texas. We're about to take you to one of the messages from the pulpit at Harvest Baptist Church, and we pray that it will be a blessing to your life. Pray that you'll enjoy this song just before the preaching. And may God richly bless you. Thank you for listening.
Amen. You got it? Is it on? All right. Praise the Lord. We gotta have that so we can get a good recording. Amen. And Proverbs chapter 14. <clears throat> so appreciate the Lord's help. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 14. And uh, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with their hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. And go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and in his children, uh, I'm sorry, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. But in the want of people is the obstruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Father, we do come before you tonight, and we're so thankful for the very word of God. Thank you that we have a book, and we don't need another. We just need to get reacquainted with the one that we have. And I pray, dear God, that you would touch my body from head to toe and give me strength, Lord, beyond my own. I pray you would allow me to have understanding and simplicity in the preaching of the Word of God. And I pray, dear God, that we would take heed to it. And that, God, we would continue to remember that we are interested in being wise and true servants of the whole, the high and holy God that we serve. I pray you'd bless now this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, we're in a series on uh, Wise and True, a study through the book of Proverbs. And uh, we're in lesson number four, uh, the Proverbs of Solomon. That's what we've entitled this section, this particular section of the book of Proverbs. All right, so we're in Proverbs chapter 14, part two. 
Hey man, we preached part one so long ago you can't remember what I preached anyhow, uh, but we preached on the positive side. Now we're looking at the negative side. We're going to call this part number two uh, uh, a fool's character. A fool's character. In this chapter, we're going to lump it up under one category tonight. And I probably will not get through the entirety of the chapter, but I'll probably be able to get about half of it and pick up the rest next week. But I'm going to try to get her done. Amen. But we're talking tonight about a fool's character. There's several things in the text here that we can look at and see the character of a fool. I really almost hesitated to use that word because the word character uh, is most of the time uh, we would use that in a positive sense. Hey, Amen. Uh, you, you see somebody that's a, a fool, you think, man, somebody don't have no character. Hey, Amen. Mm-hmm. Most people in this generation don't have no character. Most believers have no character. They don't have anything about them that is real when nobody's around forcing them. And uh, most people on the job don't have no character. Hey, Amen. If nobody's looking, they're not going to work. Hey, Amen. And uh, you know what character is? Uh, it's, it's who you are when nobody's around. Hey, Amen. And uh, I remember Brother Sam preaching through the book of Proverbs I think for four, three or four years I don't remember on Wednesday nights and he preached a, a series called Attributes of Christian Character but he kept on talking about what is character that word character is defined basically like this when you make a groove uh, uh, into uh, let's say that you make a groove in a piece of wood and uh, that, that you're going to make that groove repeatedly until whatever design, whatever character you are trying to indent in that wood becomes what it is. In other words, character is formed by the repetition of the same things. And so that's, uh, that's kind of an overview, a very thumbnail sketch of the word character. And so that being as it may, we can definitely deduct the fact that fools do have some character. It's not good character. It's not godly character. It's foolish character. Why do you say they have character? Well, what it is is they've done things so repetitively in their lives that it is who they are. And that's how they conduct their lives. And so I looked here to the book of 14 Proverbs uh, to look at the character of a fool. A fool's character. I'm just going to get right to it tonight. There's several things here. Number one, the first thing that I see here, a, a fool's character is number one it is destructive a fool is destructive it is very character everything about them is destructive they destroy the people's lives around them they destroy relationships they destroy anything that's good in their life they destroy uh, they destroy the ability even to hear from God because they uh, refuse to submit to God and uh, you see this in verse number one again it says the foolish plucketh it down. Amen. See that destruction there? The foolish plucketh it down. Go to verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, The house of the wicked, what does it say? Shall be overthrown. There's going to be destruction there. Are you, are you listening? Uh, and verse number four, uh, verse number 12 says, that There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof. The foolish way. The end of a foolish person is what? Is death. Amen? Because it's destroyed. Everything about them is destructive. And uh, you look at verse uh, number 23. Verse number 23 says this. It says, in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips. Amen? It tendeth only uh, uh, to penury. Now there's destruction in that because that's a lazy, a fool is lazy and because of their laziness they're going to talk about all the things they want to do and all the things, they, their big dreams, their big ideas, but it'll never happen and they'll destroy their own life dreaming it away because they're lazy and they just talk and they don't, they don't go and do something, amen, about it and so that's destructive in itself. Verse number 30 says uh, um, the envy, the, ver- the last part of verse 30, envy is the rottenness of the bones. Amen. You destroy your own body. When you're a fool, you will bring destruction to your own physical body. And uh, the things that we do that are foolish in nature, they will come up and catch up to you. They will destroy the bones of your body. A, a man that goes out and drinks alcohol uh, uh, and smokes cigarettes, uh, guess what he's going to do? He, his foolish ways, he's going to end up destroying his own body. And uh, that's why you have so many people that uh, uh, are sick, amen, because they've been foolish. Or maybe they don't have the right diet. And uh, no doubt that these things are real practical, but when you're foolish about what you put into your body, 
You're going to destroy the body. There's destruction there. Amen? And so we know, number one, that a fool's character is destructive. And of course, you look at verse number 34, and it says that sin, uh, uh, the last part of verse 34, sin is a reproach. Well, how do you understand destruction there? Because the first part of that verse says what? Righteousness, which is the opposite of foolishness, righteousness, what does it do? It exalted the nation. It lifts it up. When a nation is pleasing to God, God will exalt that nation. That's why Amen. America has experienced the blessings in the days gone by. Yep. And uh, we're only under the mercy of God right now that He hadn't already destroyed us, but it's happening. It's happening before our very eyes. But He said, sin is a reproach. Uh, the opposite of exaltation would be abased, amen, or destroyed. And so, what's happened to America? We're being destroyed because of the foolishness, amen, of the people as a whole. We've been foolish in our embracings. We've been foolish, amen, in our entertainment. We've been foolish in a lot of things. And therefore, the, the, the character of fools is destructive, amen. You'll find that the Bible tells us in Proverbs, amen, chapter 16, and verse number 8, Listen to what the Bible says. Uh, pride goeth before what? Pride goeth before destruction. Amen. And uh, when you have pride, you're a fool. And you say, well, I don't need help. I, I, I think it ought to be my way or the highway. I, or I, I, like a, I want to do this because I want to... I mean, we all have a little bit of that and a tendency. We better be careful because the Bible says pride... When you start to experience that foolish pride, it's what sets the stage for your destruction. Amen. It says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. When you start to lift up uh, in pride mm -hmm. and your spirit becomes haughty, and that just simply means that you're foolish in the sense you're not teachable and uh, you think you know everything. You think because, uh, you know, and sometimes people with age, they think, well, I, I see it among siblings, you know, well, I'm the oldest. I know more than you. You know, and that's just a stupid, it's pride. All it is, it's pride. And, uh, and, uh, and it's not just siblings that do that, but all through life, people will say, well, who do you think you are? Uh, you're just a young whippersnapper. And, and that's why Paul, uh, dealing with Timothy, as Timothy was a young pastor, he said, let no man despise thy youth. You know why? It's a prideful thing, no doubt. It has to be humbled. Uh, amen. Uh, if your pastor's younger than you, and I know a lot of men that sit under younger men, they may not have to submit. Brother, Brother Grimes is a good example of that. He's submitted to a pastor now, right now, and his pastor is much younger than him. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's that's humbling, but it's not wrong. It's just it's your pride's not going to like that. Amen? And you start to get kind of haughty. Well, I, listen, I, I've been around this thing. I, I hate that kind of attitude. Well, I've been around a long time. I don't care how long you've been around. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Amen? And he said that haughty spirit is what comes before the fall, but it's all a result of pride. That is foolishness. But what's the opposite? Wait a minute. What is the whole series about? Wise and true. Amen? Well, to, to have wisdom... You can't be full of pride because a wise person says, you know what, I don't know everything. You know what, maybe the maybe the Lord has a higher ways than I do. Absolutely He does. And sometimes we think, well, I wouldn't do it. Thank God. Thank God that we're not God because there's a lot of things we wouldn't do uh, the way that God does them, amen, because we think we're so smart, but we're really not very smart at all. And uh, we just have to be honest about it, amen. A yeah. fool, amen, the character of a fool is destructive. Pride, you mark somebody down that's full of pride, I'm telling you it's a matter of time before they will be destroyed and they'll be destroying those around them. You go to a job and somebody can't be taught nothing just because they've done it forever. Hey man, I, I remember dealing with that at Chick-fil-A when I was there and uh, people that were much longer. In fact, the, everybody that was my boss when I started at Chick-fil-A, they had been with Chick-fil-A for years and years and years only two of them were older than I was, and uh, that didn't matter. And uh, for years and years, they'd been there, and within just a few months, I was their boss. And uh, when I'm telling you, it rubbed the cat the wrong way, friend. There was some friction in that. I mean, I was attacked. Uh, I remember telling my wife, I said, Dear God, I'm an overglorified babysitter, and I'm about to fire every one of them because of that pride. Amen. And they, it, well, I don't, you know, and I had to start teaching them things. And it's hard because, you know, what they say, Well, I've been doing, I've been 
that chick wait 15 years. You've been here 15 weeks. Amen. I know, but you're not doing it right. Amen. And you have to remember that 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 pride. Amen. When somebody gets that way. I watched. Uh, I'm, I remember one young lady, for example. She was uh, man. I couldn't stand her. I'm just being honest with you. She was a devil, and uh, and she just she was about as high in a position as you could get. And I didn't like her one bit. She was about 20 years younger than me, and she just. I want. I told her one day. I, I shouldn't have done it, but I, I I got right with God about it. Amen. Wouldn't well, have to hold that over my head now. But I told her one day, Mackenzie in the drive thru She was making me mad with her mouth and her pride. I said, young lady. I said, I tell you what. I don't have a problem. And you have money and spanking your tail. And she looked at me, and I mean, she could have fired me, and uh, but Trisha wouldn't let her. But I'm telling you, I was just so mad, and I didn't know what else to say. I said, she needs a tail whooping, hey, amen. She needs a rod of grass. And uh, but you know, I watched that pride begin in her life, and she just—I I mean, I tried to talk to her and say, look, you're not a good example. You're in leadership, and I know that you're much, much younger. But I'm trying to help you. And I remember the day that she just kept on, kept on going down the road. She came up there one day in a bikini and got behind the counter and boy that is my boss wasn't there and uh, all this stuff happened and you know what I saw that young lady within a matter of about three or four months she was as high as they come in a position she lost everything ended up not even having a job and uh, why because she got full of pride she wouldn't be teachable and uh, Trisha would take her aside and try to teach her and say look you can't do this I know you're young and she gave a lot of grace for the fact that she is young and immature and some people need to grow up you know I thank God for people that were patient with me when I was trying to grow up and uh, but uh, then anyways there comes a point I, all I'm trying to say is that a fool's character is destructive the Bible says this listen to this in Romans chapter three if you go read Romans chapter three you'll find a list of certain types of people I'm not going to go preach Romans chapter three uh, but I, you know if you look at it I, I, maybe I'll just look over there for just a minute and to try to show what I'm talking about but in chapter three excuse me um, excuse me uh, in chapter three the Bible talks about uh, people that are they're, they're, well, they're fools is what they are. But in, in chapter 3, uh, you start reading uh, about the types of people. Let me just give you some examples of what I'm talking about. It, it said uh, uh, they're slander. we've been slandered uh, in verse 8 and verse 9. Are we better than they? No. And uh, talking about Jews and Gentiles. And in verse 10 says there's none righteous. Amen. Verse 11 says there's none that seeketh after God. He's dealing with the Jews uh, and holding on to their religion. You know, and he's letting them know, hey, they're they're not righteous. Whether you're a Jew or not, you're not seeking after God. And he goes, they're gone out of the way. Verse 12 says, they are all gone out of the way. They're all they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Hey, you know what he's saying? Verse number 18, there is no fear of God. Amen. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. Are y'all listening? I'm telling you. He said in verse 19, their mouth may be stopped. Amen. Every mouth. In verse number, they're, 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 that they might become guilty before God. And, uh, and listen, he goes on and on. And it talks about, verse 23, For all have sinned, amen, and come short of the glory of God. There is no doubt about that. But here's what I want to get to. He's given a list of these people. He's given a list primarily. He's preaching to the church at Rome. And he's painting the comparison between a Jew and a Gentile. But do you know what he's basically summing them up as? They're a bunch of fools. They're fools. And listen, that being said, here's the verse. Here's the verse. He said in verse number 16 of chapter 3, destruction and misery are in their ways. You know what he's saying? He's saying the same thing that the psalmist is saying here. He's saying the same thing that, uh, that Solomon. I, I said the psalmist, but I'm trying to say Solomon, the psalmist's son. Amen? And that does too much S's. Amen? But uh, King David's son Solomon here is telling us that a fool, his character is destructive. And Paul is telling the church at Rome, when he paints the picture of the foolish people, there's no fear of God. Come on, you can't be more clear about a fool than that. He said destruction. Amen. And not only destruction, destruction and misery are in their ways. Romans 3.16. You know what I just thought about? You look at somebody that's miserable. 
I promise you, you're looking at a fool. You're looking at a fool. Destruction and misery. What is that we said? I think it was last Sunday. Maybe I think it was. Uh, that misery loves company. That's why people want it. They don't want to sin by themselves. They want to take people with them. Amen. And so uh, a fool's character, he is destructive, number one. Number two, uh, I see something else about a fool's character in this chapter. And uh, I see this. I see that a fool's character, not only is it destructive, but number two, it is deceitful. It is deceitful. Look at verse number three. In the mouths of the foolish is a rod of what? Pride. Amen. How about that? In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. A proud person. A person that's full of pride, you know what they do? They're deceitful. They try to make you think they're better than what they are. They try to act like they know something they don't know. And that's, what a, that's what a rod of pride in somebody's mouth will do. They, they try to act like they got it together, amen, with their mouth. They act like they're holy. They act like they're separated. They act like they love the Lord. You ever heard somebody say, I love the Lord? Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but what? Their hearts are far from me. That's a fool. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you right now, that's deceitful because the fool thinks he's got something to say. I, he's deceiving everybody he says it to. Not only that, look at verse number five. Verse number five says this A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. You know what lies are? It's deceit. Amen. Hey, Do you know you don't have to tell a bold faced lie to be a liar? Amen. A, a little lie is just as wicked in the eyes of God as some big old whopper tail. Amen. I'm telling you that deceit is a lie. You know what Abraham did when he took Sarah and Sarai and they went down to Egypt? He said, Hey, hon, you're so pretty. You're so fair to look upon. You're beautiful. They're going to want you. Amen. I know. I see how them fellows look at you. And I want you to tell them that you're my sister. Well, wait a minute. She was. She was his half sister. Amen. They, they, did, they were kin, but they weren't a full blooded sister. But that's a half truth. Right. That's deceit, is what it is. And a half truth is a whole lie. Amen. If you can deceive people because you have an agenda, let me tell you something about a fool. A fool will spend their life trying to make somebody think something. That's a lot of salesmen are deceitful. Amen. They really are because they try to make you think, well, this is a, you know, you, they deceive you into thinking that uh, you're getting a better deal than what you are. They deceive you. Amen. And you know what? A lot of individuals are deceitful because they're not honest. They're not upfront about things and they're fooled because they're deceiving. I mean, we, we, we understand. There are a lot of deceitful people. They're fools. That's all they are. They're liars. They don't speak true witness. They speak false witness. They're liars. They're deceitful. Most of the politicians, I think, are probably uh, deceitful. Amen. They're fools. They deceive. They say, well... I, I mean, yeah, that's true, but you know, I, 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 I did mean what I said there, but then I'm going to tell you about this bucket list of things they're going to slide in once they get in here and do what uh, they deceived you into thinking that's all they believe. Amen. Well, I think it happened today. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy, I think it was a shock. Uh, it's not a shock to me. He's not one of us. Amen. Say amen right there. I know he's got some conservative views, and I'm glad for that, but he ain't one of us. And he, his true colors came out today, and, he, and I think it even shocked his running mate. I will see what happens there. But he's been deceiving. And you know what he said today? He's okay with a full term abortion. I don't know if it was today. It's when I found out about it was today. He's okay with a full term abortion. I'm not okay with any term of abortion, much less a full term abortion. You might as well just go ahead and have a slaughterhouse, amen? Because that's a, it's already wicked in the eyes of God. It's an abomination to shed innocent blood. God hates it, and we know that. But but see, he's deceived so many people to get where he's at now, yeah. and they pressed him on the issue, and pressed yeah. him on the issue, and pressed him. Now he has to come out and say, well, I'm okay with a full term abortion. Guess what? His deceit, it shows how foolish he really is. And that's a great example. It's very much uh, preeminent. And so they're deceitful. They're false witness. Verse number 8. And by the way, uh, this whole this whole Stormy Daniels baloney that's going on, this whole porn, she's a whore. Y'all understand that? She's a stinking whore. Made over 300 pornography movies. Slept with over 3,000 people, men and women, is what I read last night. She's a whore. She's a prostitute. That's exactly what the Bible says about her. And I'm going to tell you something. Else. They're up there trying to smear the President of the United States of America because
because they don't want him to be in control. Amen. And I'm telling you, there's some false witnesses. Her account don't even make sense. How are you going to remember details of everything that happened 20 years ago if it really, and I'm telling you, it ain't yeah. possible. I watched a video last night. I, who was that? Greg Kelly talking about how then she could remember the color of the tiles look for hogwash. Hey, man, and, and I'm telling you, you know what that is? A false witness. That's a fool. Hey, ma'am. And uh, anyhow, there's some of that that goes on. If, but verse number 8, look at verse, or did I say verse 5? Did we look at verse 5? Yeah, we did. Verse 8. Verse 8 says this. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his ways. But notice this. There's the folly. The folly of fools is what? Say it out loud. See. It's what? Deceit. It's deceit. We're talking about the character of a fool is deceitfulness. He is full of deceit. That's his very folly. That's his very sin. He's, he's going to be a deceiver. Everything about a foolish person is going to deceive. You know what? We got a lot of deceivers sitting in our churches today. A lot of deceivers. They might even put a suit and tie on. They might wear the prettiest, most modest, conservative dress. Amen. It's right and biblical. And they might come in. They might carry a King James Bible. They might know how to hit the right notes. Amen. In the song. They know how to say amen. They know how to put the right amount of money in the offering. Are you listening to me? Hey! But inside, they're dead, dead, dead. You know why? They're deceivers, amen. They're trying to deceive the people of God. They're trying to deceive the man of God. Hey, I think some of them are trying to deceive God, amen. But God knoweth the heart, amen. But I'm telling you, hey, a fool is his folly is deceit. And he's full of deceit, amen. And then if you look over in verse number 25, verse 25 says this. It says, uh, I'm lumping these together for, for a reason because it's repetitive in this chapter. That's why verse 25 says, hey, what? A true witness delivereth souls. Amen. Hey, there's a difference, amen, in helping people. I hey, come on now. A wise person is going to be a deliverer. Amen. They're going to help people. But notice what it says. So it says uh, uh, in, in uh, we're in verse uh, Maso, verse 25, and uh, it says, "But a deceitful witness speaketh lies." He's not going to help nobody. I wonder how many false prophets fall into that category. Mm. Amen. A, a, amen. A wise, amen, servant. He's delivering people. But a fool, he's, he's delivering lies. Amen. He's deceiving and uh, telling people, you know, Joel Osteen's a deceiver. He's a fool. He's a deceiver. He tells everybody, you don't have to repent. You know, you just need to find the champion right. and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and do better. But I fool you on that. You can't do better. If we could do better, Calvary would have never had to happen. That's a deceitful thing to say to somebody. When you think, oh, well, don't be, be, be very careful that you don't become foolish and, and approving of somebody's lifestyle. What do you mean? It's real. It's real easy to say when somebody says, uh, for example, somebody misses church and they give you the reason. And it's not really a biblical reason. Amen. Are y'all listening? And they give you that reason. Be, I tell my wife this all the time. I said, don't say that's okay. And I mean, we have to be, don't say that's okay. No, it's not okay. We just say, I understand. And that says more than what you think it does. Because I know why you ain't in the house of God. You don't have an appetite for it. You can tell me all you want to tell me. Well, I, I mean, unless you're really sick or something like that yeah. and providentially hindered, there is no excuse that's going to stand before God. Right. God's going to pull the rug out from underneath us. Quit trying to deceive everybody. Amen. That's what they do. Well, you know, and they say this and that and the other. But I'm telling you right now, they, they, they don't be so deceiving and don't be a fool. Hey, hey, as We're trying to be wise and true. Don't condone somebody that's contrary to God just because you don't want to have confrontation with them. Don't condone somebody that you know is blatantly sinning against God because you don't want to have... Well, I don't want conflict. I don't really give a rip if you want conflict or not. You better love them enough. Don't, just keep your fat mouth shut. If you, can't, if you can't rebuke them, don't, certainly don't condone them. That's what I'm saying. Don't say, well, that's all right. No, it's not all right. Because when we get into that mindset, I, I know you say that's not a big deal. Well, the more I study this Bible, the more it is a big deal. Because a lot of times we're, we become a fool and we become, you know what we become? You know what that is? We become a false witness. Because we're not, wait a minute now. What? Hold on, I'm not going to run a rabbit too far, but do you know the difference between a false witness and a true witness? 
Amen. A false witness is giving witness to something that's not real. That means it's okay. No, it's not. That's false. I can't witness to that because I'm saved and the Holy Ghost of God lives inside of me. I can't be a false witness. I have to say what God says. And God said, that's not okay. Amen. And don't be greedy. Uh, don't be greedy about uh, your feelings. I mean, you know, we get greedy with our feelings. Well, what do you mean? Well, if I do that, I'm going to lose a friend. If you lose somebody for telling the truth, they were never your friend in the first place. Hey, Amen. Right. I don't care if they're blood family. Hey, Amen. I got some blood family that won't speak to me to this day. I love them, but hey, guess what? It ain't my problem. And guess what? You know how much sleep I lose over that? Not an ounce. You know why? Because I'm not a false witness. I'm not going to be a false witness. Hey, Amen. Right. Right. And so don't don't be deceitful. And then and, and so we see that the the, the the fool's character number one it's destructive. Yeah. Everything that they do, everything they say, it destroys. You know, people say when we were kids, you know, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You ever heard that? That's about the stupidest lie that I ever heard in my life. Yeah. Maybe because words do hurt. If they didn't matter, God's word wouldn't have so much to say about the things we speak with our tongue. God's word wouldn't have much to say about controlling that tongue. God's word wouldn't have much to say about a false witness, a deceitful, amen, fool, amen. No doubt, I, I, I'm telling you, it you, it matters what we say. You better be careful. And, and I know that we can say the right thing and say it the wrong way, and and, uh, and we got to be careful about that too, amen. And uh, I know that uh, there's been times that, as a parent, I've said the exact thing that needed to be said, but I probably didn't say it the right way. It wasn't well received. And I remember having to go back and revisit that and say, okay, we got to deal with this. We're not scooting this under the rug. I'm not sorry for what I said, but maybe I should have said it a different way. There's nothing wrong with being honest about that. Hey, it needs to be dealt with. I, I don't want to be sharp with people, but I, at the same time, I don't want to be so panty wasted, son, that I can't look them in the eyeball and say, you are wrong. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible. Now, if they're not wrong, you don't have no business down there. Right. Don't be deceitful. Don't make somebody think that what they're doing is okay when it's not. Because you know something about that? What if it's somebody who truly is ignorant? What if they really don't know? I remember the Lord teaching me years ago, one of the greatest lessons of my spiritual life, is there's a big difference between ignorance and rebellion. And if they don't truly... Now, they're without excuse according to the Word of God. Amen? According to the book of Romans, they're without excuse. Because whether they ever picked that book up or not, God gave us the book. Right. And we're going to be judged by the book. And He said, they're without excuse. Amen? So let's just stay with the book. But aside from that, understand this. There are some people who really truly are ignorant. And if they're ignorant then we need to teach them. Because if they're ignorant and we deceive them by saying, or letting them, or you know, leading them on, misleading, deceiving, say, well, it's okay, you know, it's not that big a deal. It's really not that big a deal. I know you're tired, you worked hard all day, you don't need to be at church on Thursday night. That's not biblical at all. Yeah. Well, church ain't in the Bible on Thursday night. No, but it, this principle is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Right. Amen. How much Bible do you need? And so, don't be deceitful. The Bible says this. In Psalm 52, verse number 2, the, the, Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor. Amen. Working deceitfully. Psalm 52, 2. You know what he's talking about? The fool is deceitful and his tongue's sharp like a razor and it works deceitfully and a voice is, is not only is it sharp I, I will say this a, a razor that's really sharp there's only there's another character to a sharp razor do you know what it is for it to be sharp and have the sharpness of it what is another character that has to be there I don't know if you read between lines like I do or not but I understand this mm -hmm. I don't know how I understand this God gives me understanding sometimes but I know this to be a fact if I have a razor and it's very sharp, and that says that their tongue is sharp because they're deceitful in it. What else has to be there for that razor to be sharp? You have, I, I know that's a loaded question. You got any idea? Huh? No? Any idea? You know what has to happen for a ra for? Get this. This is so good. It fits right here for a razor to be sharp. That means it's going to cut, right? It's not dull. A dull razor. You can pick up anything dull. You can get a jagged cut, but it ain't going to cut real smooth and it ain't going to cut real deep. It's just going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. I've tried to shave with a dull razor before. Oh, my soul. <laughs> but I'll tell you something about a sharp razor. You know something? If you, I'm going to check me out on this. Go find Dr. Google. 
She'll probably back me up too. A sharp razor. How do you think that razor gets sharp? Okay, how do you sharpen it? With a sharpening stone. You file it down. You take a piece of metal yeah. and you file it down to the point to get it sharp. In order for it to be sharp and effective, you know something that has to happen with that thing? If you ever cut on metal, I did a little metal working, and you know what you have to do when you're, when you're forging something or you're trying to, to, to get an edge on something? You know what else you have to do? You ever taken your knife down and let them sharpen it? And when they get through sharpening it, what do they do? You know what they do? You know what they do when they get through sharpening that? I mean, she's wide open. I'm, I'm telling you. You know what they do when they get through sharpening that blade? They smooth it out. They smooth it out. They grind off all that excess. You know what they, they do? Make it smooth. Hey, think about what the Bible's saying here. A deceitful tongue is sharp like a razor. You know what makes it deceitful? He's real smooth with his words. He's so smooth. Hey, man, he's so smooth and deceitful, but it'll cut you deep. I'm telling you, friend, you'll get that in the morning. Hey, I'm telling you, for a razor to be sharp, it's got to be smooth. And for somebody that's foolish, amen, with their tongue, they're smooth in the things they say, but the whole time they're cutting you because they're deceiving you. You wouldn't be deceived if a smooth talker wasn't talking. Amen. Mm. You better have some wisdom to know. Amen. That's some good Bible preach. Amen right there. That's good. He said this. He said, A tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. The Bible says in John, I like what Jesus said. I preached a whole message out of this before you heard it before. At John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus is dealing with the religious crowd. They're talking about, man, who are you? You're born of fornication. They're accusing him. They're basically going back and accusing Mary and Joseph of uh, fornicating and having Jesus out of wedlock and, and all this and that. And he's, he, you know, they're having this conversation. That's the whole chapter. And Jesus makes a statement. He said, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. You know why? Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. When you find somebody that's a deceiver, better be careful. They might be a child of hell. They might be somebody that's never been saved. Amen. Might be why they lie all the time. Because they never they don't have any truth in them. Amen. There's some people like that. And uh, you know all liars shall have their place where? In the lake which burneth with fire. Because there's no truth in them. Amen. And so we know that the, 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 the fool's character is deceitful. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15.33, listen to this now, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Hey, guess what? When you're a deceiver, your communication's evil. And it's going to corrupt good manners. You're going to corrupt other people's manners because you're deceiving them into thinking it's okay to act that way. And you're going to corrupt your own manners because you're, you're speaking lies and deceit pretty soon. You know what happens? You ever been around a habitual liar? I can name a few. I'm telling you, I've been around them. Everything they say is a lie and it continues upon, continues upon, continues. And I tell you what they do. They're so so stupid and so deceived themselves. They honestly, I know people like this, they lie so much they actually start to believe their own lies. Because they're so used to lying habitually, they honestly start to believe their own lies. That's deceit at its worst level. That is deceit, friend. And he said, be not deceived. Amen. The Bible says in James 1.22, you know this to be the case, and I know this to be the case. He said, but be ye what? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Why? Deceiving your own self. I'm going to tell you something. The character of a fool is deceitful. And a fool, one of the characters that makes a fool deceitful is this. He'll come in and hear the word of God. He'll, he'll hear the Word of God. He'll hear it. I don't have no doubt that everybody in here can hear me. I mean, they'll hear the Word of God, Cassidy. They'll hear it. Some of them will even listen to it. And they'll hear it. And you know what they'll do? They'll, oh, that was wonderful. And they'll walk out that door and they'll go on about their life as if God hasn't even spoken to them. And you know what they do? They think they're just fine. They think they're just, oh, yeah, I'm fine. That was good service. Amen. You know how you can tell when somebody's like that? Because if, if they can be under the preaching of the Word of God, 
Amen. And just that quick, they go right back to talking about the whatever problems they got in their life, whatever issues are going on. I'll tell you, that's somebody who's deceiving themselves. They think they don't really... They just let it blow right past their heart. And Cassidy, don't ever become that kind of person. Don't ever listen to the Word of God. And then the very next thing, as soon as the Word of God is over, you just go on about your life. You know why? You'll start thinking you're fine. You'll start thinking, what well, God ain't speaking to me. And he He'll get to the point where He ain't speaking to you because yeah. you're deceiving yourself because you're a hearer of the Word and I don't, don't become that person. Don't be one of those that is deceiving yourself simply because you refuse to obey the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If I start noticing things of deceit come out of my mouth, I want to get in that book and do a checkup real quick. Because don't think we don't have temptations, friend. Don't think for a minute. There's some things along the way I have to stop and say, whoa, man, where'd that come from? I didn't go there, but in my heart I was like, man, I was thinking about being a little bit dishonest. What do you mean? Well, I wasn't going to lie. You know, I was just going to kind of embellish the situation. No, no, that's deceitful, friend. How bad was it? Was it real bad? I mean, I'm telling you, how bad was it? Was it real bad, friend? And so be careful because I'm telling you right now, as we study uh, these next two weeks on these two things, we're going to see, we're going to see there's about three or four more things in the chapter. But I'm telling you, we're looking here at the very opposite of somebody that is wise and true is somebody that is an absolute lying fool. The opposite of truth is a lie. The opposite of truth is false. You're either a true witness or a false witness. You're either a wise individual or you're a fool. How do you know which one you are? Based upon your character. Is your character that of destruction? What you say, does it build people up in the Lord? Does it help them? I mean, are you really interested in, 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 in helping people really truly walk with God? Yeah. Or are you just interested in cramming your knowledge down their throat because you know they need it? Mm. Now you better think about that. See, if all you want to do is have a conversation with somebody because you know some things and not be interested in the outcome of them becoming a holy person, you know what you are? A deceiver. I'm telling you, you know what you are? You're a fool. Don't be that way. I don't think anybody's that way. I'm just saying... This is maintenance that we need to have because if you're not careful, you, you, you or I, either one, could become very destructive. Amen. We could become destructive in our character. What do you mean? Well, everything I do is that I'm going to find something wrong with everybody. You know what a fool's destructive character looks like? He criticizes everything about everyone all the time. He can't find nothing good about nobody. He's always got something stupid to say about somebody else. Well, that guy's an idiot. Why? Because if we start to become foolish like that, we'll start thinking, we'll start justifying that, well, I, I'm, I'm the expert on it. Yeah, remember a, a, a what? The, hey, man, listen, he said what? The pride. Pride cometh before what? Destruction. Destruction. So be careful. And then a, a haughty spirit before fall. So the fool has character that is destructive and it's deceitful. Now, there's about three or four more. I will pick that up next Thursday. But I'm telling you right now, there's a lot here. And, and the whole point is, God's trying to teach us, church. It don't matter whether we're in Allen, Texas, or we go back to Cleveland, North Carolina, or Timbuktu, the Philippines. I'm thinking the Philippines. I'm thinking Europe sounds pretty good right about now. Hmm. I'm just saying, no matter where we're at, God still expects us to be wise and true no matter where we're at, no matter what day it is, whether it's 2024 or if the Lord tarries is coming for 30 more years, which I don't believe He will, we're still supposed to be wise and we're supposed to be people of truth. Amen. Let's stand together across the room. Father, thank You. Well, my friends, we've just heard a message from the pulpit of Harvest Baptist Church. I pray that it was a help and a blessing to your life. This is no doubt a place where God's Word changes lives. If God's Word was a blessing or a help to your life today, we'd like to hear from you. Please write to us at Harvest Baptist Church, P.O. Box 110, Allen, Texas 75013. Again, it is P.O. Box 110, Allen, Texas 75013. May God richly bless you and the preaching of His Word. Have a wonderful day.